devastating of childhood medical conditions. It's characterized by core social impairments and affects one in 59 U.S. children. It's estimated to cost the U.S. $1 trillion by the year 2025. There are several reasons for these costs. One, unlike other medical conditions, we have no biological tests to detect autism, so we have to rely on a behavioral diagnosis. Although symptoms can be uh, uh, present very early in life, we can only reliably diagnose autism at two years of age. Unfortunately, due to long clinic wait times, the average age of an autism diagnosis in the US is four years and much older in rural areas that lack medical specialists. We also have no medications to treat autism's core features. We do have behavioral therapies that can be effective, and if enacted early in life, can um, increase IQ in a child up to 15 to 20 points. However, these interventions come late for too many. So imagine if we could detect autism biologically in a biological sample in kids when they first start to show behavioral symptoms, or even more optimistically, many months or even years before the behavior manifests um, behaviorally. So what my lab has been doing is leading an effort to look for biological markers that have been implicated in mammalian social functioning in a fluid called cerebral spinal fluid. Um, cerebral spinal fluid bathes the brain and the spinal column, and it's more representative of brain biochemistry than blood, where many other diagnostic tests have been targeting. It has been highly useful in other neurological conditions, such as MS and multiple forms of dementia, for diagnostic purposes. So what my lab thus far has um, shown is that we've found very low levels of CSF vasopressin, which is a social neuropeptide involved in male social functioning. This can identify children who are behaviorally symptomatic, and we have really exciting new data in neonates to show that many years before they develop autism, we can already see this signature in their spinal fluid. So this provides a platform for personalized medicine. Many of you who understand this disorder know it's highly heterogeneous. There are multiple com comorbidities in terms of anxiety disorder, seizure disorders. And so many of us say, there's a saying, you've seen one child, you've met one child, you've met one child with autism, right? And so what I want to do is harness the power of proteomic, proteomic tools to be able to identify a multi-panel biomarker for autism. And what I think we'll be able to do is to identify these subtypes of autism, which will pave the way for precision medicine approaches to treating these various subtypes. OK, so why support my research program? There are social impact reasons for doing so. Help revolutionize how autism is detected and treated. At the first signs of symptoms, we could rapidly diagnose a child and then we could get them the life-changing therapies they need before it's too late. In biologically identified infants, and there's a lot of risk factors for autism, there's familial risks, there's advanced parental age, preterm infants, they're all at increased risk for autism. If we could identify them biologically and administer prophylactic behavioral interventions, they may never even develop the disease. There are also market breakthrough considerations. This is conservatively a $10 billion market opportunity for whoever cracks the autism diagnostic. The novel druggable targets that these proteomics analyses will reveal will again pave the way for the development of drugs. And this is a proven model. My lab has recently filed two full patents, one on an autism diagnostic, and we have a drug that increases social abilities in kids with autism. And I'm happy to talk about all of this and more over lunch. Thank you.